and the thoughts I was getting were like just just like end it yeah, yeah. Bro, it was legit like just just you need to stop feeling this way you need to yeah. end it and I think I was like trying to escape at that time and like in the confidence again I started doubting myself mm. um, and so when they all that self doubt and all that it just um, it's just that snowball effect I guess and then yeah. they, you start to just I had because I don't know if you know but I had a mental breakdown during that COVID no, no. Where I went into the, um, the psych, um, the mental ward. For all those youngins out there, you, know, um, you just stick with it. You yeah. Know, and just, uh, you have that passion, follow that passion and do the hard work. Just talk it, walk it, walk your zone. <laughs> Tim Laffey, how are you, brother? Yeah, good, bro. Good. Just um, yeah, just cruising today, man. <laughs> Thanks for having me. No, no, it's a pleasure, man. It's, um, it's awesome, you know, the power of connections, power of just referring and and whatnot and just the people we're getting on the podcast recently it's just been amazing and well from the start but um yeah man it's honor honored to have you on and um it's been amazing to kind of watch your career too like one of these guys who's had a bit of a redemption and just come out the other end and just been carving it since you've since you've you know come over here and um it's been pretty amazing to see like when you originally started from the dogs mm. um, and i remember your first year coming on the scene i was like, holy yeah hey, yeah it's um it felt like 20 years ago that <laughs> I feel like a dinosaur now. <laughs> um, yeah, bro, but um, yeah, it's gotten me to this side of the world, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I never thought I would you know, find myself on this side side mm. of the world with my family. Um, it never really crossed my mind, but you know, coming towards the back end of my career in NRL, um, I guess it's just like any business, mm. you know, you, you kind of realise you're one of those old blokes that you know, is getting pushed to the side, <laughs> and um, and before you know it, you know that career is almost to an end, and, um, and that's why it's important, I guess, to, mm. to have that backup. You know, they always say, and I've always, you know, had people come in and say that when I was a young kid coming through, um, you know, NRL, and they're like, nah, I want to enjoy these years. They're gonna go slow. And then next thing you know, it's um, <laughs> hey, hasn't it gone slow at all. Mate? <laughs> It's definitely gone quick and, yeah, no contracts come up. and then Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's crazy, bro. <laughs> yeah, well, man, it's been an unbelievable career and I still believe you've got much more to give. Um, but, yeah, how, how are you finding the weather over here compared to Australia, sunny Sydney? Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's different, that's for got, sure. Got shorts <laughs> on. my shorts on, mate. <laughs> the, the past two days have been pretty good. Um, you know, th- this spring hasn't been too bad, but it's, um, it's crazy how quickly... You know, you adapt, don't you? Like, mm. me and my missus are saying, hey, this is winter back, this is win- winter weather yeah, back in yeah. Oz. And, you know, we're like, you know, taking, we're like, you know, loving this weather. You know, we're thinking it's hot. <laughs> 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 we're back home, we'll be complaining that this yeah. is, you know, cold. But, um, yeah, it's it's a big adjustment when we first got here. Um, even with the, how the sun doesn't come up till like eight in the morning and goes down at like three when I'm walking to pick up, pick up the kids from school. <laughs> it's like, well, you think you're at Hogwarts or something. <laughs> <laughs> you think you're in Harry Potter, mate. It's, um, it's, yeah, it's unreal. And then the summertime, it's like the sun's coming up at five and going down at like 9.30. Crazy, isn't it? Mate, it's just, just crazy. Like you never get that back at uh, home. So it's um, it's good experience for myself and my yeah. family, I guess. I agree with it. I've actually realised recently for myself, just obviously coming from Brisbane, like the sun would go down at six, six o'clock. Yeah, okay. yeah. So you, like, I'm a bit of an early one in bed. I'm in bed by like nine, nine, <laughs> nine thirty normally. And then over here, like the sun's still up now until like the sun, the light yeah, is still up until yeah, like yeah. eight thirty. And you feel weird, like, where's the time gone? Yeah. So, um, so my sleep pattern has definitely shifted a bit and yeah. found myself going to bed later, but I need to, need to wind that back in but um yeah how's um you're a bit injured at the moment you're saying yeah just um tore my calf in my hammy um Mm. so double whammy there um good fun that but that's just part of the game i guess you you know you um you get your injuries here and there and um so yeah just in rehab at the moment now so just gotta grind through the rehab and um get back on that field asap yeah is it um i like to kind of go parts of your career here and there but like reflecting on your career would you change anything um i think yeah i would um you know, i would uh there was probably a few decisions 
or people that guided me to, um, mm. you know, I, I was at the Dragons and then I, I went to the Bulldogs. I left on my contract early. Mm. Um, so I kind of wish I stayed at Dragons and played out that contract. Um, and then also, also wish I came over here probably yeah. like a year or two earlier. Really? Um, yeah, because I started um, not enjoying what I was doing in the NRL, you know, you kind of um, as a kid. Yeah. You dream to to play in the NRL, and you, know, um, you think it's the best thing ever. And then through my young career, I was loving it. And then the back end, um, you know, I kind of lost the love for it and the passion. And you know, I, I wish I came here a bit earlier because coming back, he, coming over here, it's given me that that love mm. and passion for the game again. It's uh, made me find a love um, I've lost, you know, a yeah, few yeah. years ago back in the NRL, and um, yeah, it's definitely helped a lot uh, mentally. For sure. What would you say um, when the love of the game went? What do you think it was to do with? Um, I think it's just I had my own personal issues going on. Um, and you know, I guess when you're not, I think we weren't going too well um, you know, when I was at the Dragons. Mm. And, you know, winning helps a lot you know, to a team. And um, yeah, so it was just, yeah went doing too well and then my own performance I was um, lacking the confidence again I started doubting myself mm. um, and so when they, all that self-doubt and all that it just um, you know, it's just that snowball effect I guess and then yeah. you, know, you, you start to just make it more like a job rather than a hobby, hobby you know yeah. what I mean so yeah it was that part it's interesting you say that right because over the years I've realised and learned not every like we're not robots so like how one coach might deal with this player, he might totally deal different. Like some people need that, you know, support. Some people might need that guidance. Some people may need that tough love. And like identifying like that, what a coach can offer and what, what type of, co- like if a coach is versatile and he can work with personalities even better, that's normally the key element to a good team as well because he knows that, okay, these players are that, these players yeah. are this. Can you reflect on that at any stage? Where yeah, definitely. I, I had to be a coach, mate. It's not just... <laughs> It's um like what you just said. It's not just about coaching a team. Like you have all these different personalities mm-hmm. that are coming through. You have your veterans, your mm-hmm. your rookies, um, you know, and then you have like different cultures that come through. So they have like um they need different different yeah, teachings. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's um mate, it's um so big raps to all those coaches. Yeah. Big shout out to all the coaches out there, mate. <laughs> yeah, you know. um, it, it's I guess for myself the way I play. Uh, like what you said, I uh, I don't like to feel like I'm a robot, mm. and um, you know, the, back in in our, there's a lot of structure. Yeah, um, yeah. When I was coming through, a lot of clubs and teams, you know, you got to just get to this spot, stay in your lane. Um, you mm. know, so I started to feel like I couldn't do what I wanted, and over here, you know, with um, roles with our Salford coaches, um, yeah, he's pretty good. You know, he's brought that back out in me it's um that freestyle kind of playing yeah. you know where i can just if i want to roam to the right side yeah, of the yeah. field my, uh, i don't need a, a visa to go <laughs> <laughs> i can just you know yeah, roam yeah. over there and go link up with those boys and yeah. so it's um he, he's done great you know he's brought out the best in each player yeah. and um rather than trying to work on their weakness he's strengthening their strengths i guess and it's um you can see it you know delivering out there on the field so true well Salford, a really big attacking team, even getting out of yardage or defensive areas, you very much play the ball. It's not like four hit ups for a kick. It's very shift, 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 yeah. get, shift, shift, shift. Yeah. And do you find not many teams are actually doing that? Not many teams, you know, like you've normally got a big pack, they punch it up and then you mm. get to that kick. Do you think, is, is that his philosophy of just eyes up for the others? Th- yeah, I think it's, um, you know, structure is good, you know, for when things are kind of getting out of hand and you need a, you know, um, the team's focus back but at the same time he wants us to, to play play rugby and mm. you know, with our eyes up rather than you know um, feel like robots so he, he's good like that it's, um, and you can start seeing like a few of the teams now um, kind of bring that mm. you know, attacking style you know rather than wait for the fourth to to you know throw something special you know you play two yeah. you know, when the defence aren't expecting it you know um, you know teams are starting to come out a lot Mm. a lot more attacking style for sure who would you say who's what team or well what player has kind of surprised you the most since being over here obviously I think sometimes when you're in the NRL you're in that bubble and you don't really look over the pond as such to be like oh they're going well but 
since you've been over here, what team or even like I said, what p- player has wowed you the most to be like, wow, he could crack it over there? Um, I was going to say, uh, who would it be? Um, I think uh, Andy Ack is our hooker. Mm. He's um, I think he yeah he he would have a good shot. He's um a, he you know, he's what you want in a in a hooker in defense. You know yeah. he, he stands his ground. He's not afraid to put his body on the line and um, make those repetitive tackles in the middle. Um, and in attack, mate, he's, yeah, his eyes up. It's um you know he sees something. He'll he'll run first and then. Yeah. If nothing's on, then you'll pass. So you want that in your hooker. You don't just want a yeah. hooker that's passing off the ground. You want a hooker that has that attacking um, style also. So I think he'll he'll be pretty good. Um, big Tyler Dupree. Yeah, he's been going well. Um, I think he's been our best player this year so far. Um, he's you know you can uh, definitely if he gets a good club or a good coach under him um, back in the NRL, he, you know, he'll be a definite threat uh, from other teams. Um, I haven't really thought about it to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, to be honest, I don't watch a lot of rugby yeah, in my yeah. spare time. I just like to kind of get away from it. Smart. Um, but there's a. Uh, I think there was a few. There's a few lads going over there. I think already from Huddersfield. Mm. Um, one from Huddersfield. What's his name? The uh-huh. young. Um, his dad used to play. Price. Yeah, Price. <laughs> 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 Wait, even until this day, like. Um, I'm still asking the boys what the players' names are and what position they play. Yeah, Price, yeah. I think he's like his footwork. It's um, definitely up there. Yeah, you know, one of the best I've seen for a while. So because um, I think he's going to Newcastle. Or yeah, maybe. Newcastle yeah, home. I think it's Newcastle. I think it's it's in the two of them. One at Wigan yeah, as well. Yeah, the back row from Wigan. He's um he's a good player too. Like, he's got yeah, yeah. a good um good what is it height and yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and skillful too. So. I think those lads will go well. You know, mm. they get the right coaching and a good system under them. Um, hopefully, you know, we see them get a run in the NRL when they go over there. For sure, we reflect back now to your debut. Um, that was for the the um, Dragons, right? Or was it for do- uh, dogs? Dogs, yeah, dogs. Sorry, twenty eleven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. What was that experience like? Hey, that was surreal because it was, um, you know, I also I was playing just like park footy, so mm. it's called Bundaberg Cup um, back in Australia. Right? Yeah. Um, so after I finished school and I went and worked with my brother because nothing come up um, with any contracts or anything, so I had to go play park footy with my mates, and we were the team that so we were the team that you look forward to versing because you know you're gonna pump them, <laughs> you know you know you're wow. gonna smash them. So I was at um, Campbelltown Eagles um, uh, Bundaberg Cup there, and I, nearly every game we were playing, we were getting 40 on us because so, uh, we just had like young boys yeah, yeah. playing there. We had a few of the Tigers um, under 20s who didn't play under 20s mm. will come back and play there. Anyways, um, the Bulldogs under 20s were struggling, um, you know, with our side backs. And then you know, I had a few good games in there because you're versing men. Yeah. So I had a few good games in there. And then the uh, recruitment manager comes and goes, oh, you know, we're lucky to come um, have a run with us at Dogs. Um, under 20s and mm. I was like oh yeah for sure um, I thought it would just be training and that yeah. you know get like a pair, a pair of shorts and a shirt you know <laughs> for, for my payment and they were like yeah, yeah. anyways that week um, they were like oh you, we're going to need you to start in in centre and like so that f- week when I went in they, they wanted me to start in that um, weekend to play in the 20s in, in centres and I, I knew no one's name, so I'm just like, yeah, mate, yeah, mate, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, got, I was still, it took me probably a month to get used to everyone's names and the plays. And then played that, that week and then played every game um, wow. for the 20s. And then my second year of 20s, because I was only 19, 18, sorry. And then uh, second year of 20s, the first grade team, um, you know, Josh Morris got mm. injured, lost his knee, and he's a left centre, and yeah. that's, that's my um, position. And then... You know, been playing well in under twenties and um, had a few training sessions with first grade, and then get a coach from a uh, call from the coach, um, Kevin Moore. Was like, "Hey, Timmy, mate, it's Kevin Moore." He, uh, I was just driving home from training, and uh, I was, like, "Oh, hey, mate." And he's like, "You know, um, how would you like to make your debut this week?" And I was like, uh, I started laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wow, "What do you mean for reserves, reserve grade?" <laughs> he's like, "No, nah, mate, no, nah, mate, for NRL uh, first grade." And I was just speechless. I was like, oh, yeah, for sure, man. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to, love to. So anyways, from now, I debuted um, against the Rabbitohs wow. uh, in 2011. Um, 
and it was made the best feeling ever. It was a home game at ANZ Stadium. Mm. You no know, mum and dad and um, brother and sisters were were there, and they were just cheering. They were, um, wow. they couldn't believe it. You know, I was just playing park footy wow. last year, and then this year, the, the next year, I'm I'm debuting for first grade, and I was versus my, my favorite player, Greg Lingless. Wow, wow. So well. BGI was playing full uh, full back <laughs> then. I just remember. First time I I had to, to tackle him, I was just like, I'm diving at his legs. <laughs> I'm not going to try to go up top, mate, because I'm going to go send him to the, the fifth row there. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, mate, it was a perfect. I scored a try to yeah. um uh, to put us in the lead and win yeah. that game, and it was a dream debut, uh, as you say, um, versus your your favorite player, and then yeah, it was the best, bro. Yeah, wow, that's unbelievable. For all those youngsters out there trying to yeah. thinking, you know, you've got to go through the systems. You've Exactly. Well, I, I didn't make any rep team. Mm. Um, I didn't play. You know what they call back there, like Sydney South West, New South Wales, or yeah. Australia. I didn't play any of those. Um, you know, I didn't think. So I played SG ball. Which uh, for all those youngins out there, you, know, um, you just stick with it. You yeah. Know, and just uh, you have that passion, um, and you know, you'll get your reward. Yeah. Amazing, man. And like I said, it was amazing watching you over there, and you're still killing it now. But just like I remember in particular your first year and second year, you just carving it up. Yeah, and yeah. obviously confidence was high. Do you think it was down to as well just like having that fearless with it? Yeah, definitely. I think you know, being a young young kid, you um, I just yeah, I knew you know this doesn't come often, and yeah, yeah. There's a lot of young kids out there that you know would dream to be in, in the spot I would be. So it was just yeah, that fearless mindset is mm. um, taking opportunities and just grabbing of uh, both hands, um. Uh, don't get me wrong I had some fear <laughs> running man kudos to you some unbelievable and just like that team as well at the time of the dogs was a great team as well mm. um yes yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing yeah it well, was I, even I, though I the was um a rugby union boy oh, okay so i um because i was born in samoa and then moved to new zealand mm. when i was about five years old and you know in, in new zealand rugby union rules <laughs> So the All Blacks in um, my f- we were in Christchurch and my team was uh, Crusaders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember yeah. my dad and uncle took me to a Crusaders game, and they had the likes of Justin Marshall, Andrew Murray. After that, went <laughs> home and asked my mum, "Can you cut my hair like John Lowe <laughs> had the fringe and had patches on hair?" But oh, mate, after watching that, I was just something within me just um, lit up, and yeah. I was inspired. I was just like, I need to play rugby. And, yeah. Um, dad, you know, played, sent me to play rugby and. Drove me to all my games and then went to Australia when I was nine. And then that's when Union wasn't as big and mm. league, rugby league. Um, Dad's friend said, yes. Again, man, it's awesome. It's amazing, right? Like just growing up, like I said, those icons, Justin Marshall, Andrew Mert- mm. Mertens, um, John Alumu, like just, like they're icons, not just in New Zealand, but like yeah, worldwide. Yeah, worldwide, yeah. It's, um, John Alumu, when he came around, he 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 played in Cardiff in Wales. Where, like, I'm Welsh, so he's... Oh, yeah. So I remember when he played there, and he was just after he had that illness, and then he came back to yeah, play again. Yeah, yeah he's the cool. OG, yeah. Yeah. He's big Jonah, mate. It's, um, he's like built that reputation where, yeah. and it, no matter where he was playing or what kind of mm. form he was playing in, he... People always. <laughs> he is. I would love to see that photo of you with your haircut, though. Yeah, no. Nah. <laughs> Keep that hidden in the basement back home. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. Islanders are pretty known for cutting hair. They always do the, the boys' yeah. hairs and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, a lot of the barbers are the yeah. Islander boys, you know, and they got that that style yeah. um, that they have now. So I don't know what hairstyle. I think the mullet. The mullet's yeah. come back. So <laughs> it's crazy because eh? the mullet. When I was in high school, it was there. And then it, it faded. I yeah. think Justin Bieber's hair. Came, I, I tried to rock the Justin Bieber <laughs> in the twenties. Up again, right? Um, so it's just crazy. And now the mullets come back. Yeah. It's, um, I remember people used to have to, you know, like that little. Yeah, I've, I even had the ratty in high you school. Had it all. I had it like on both sides at the bottom there. So it's, mate, whatever I seen. <laughs> <laughs> How, if you reflect on that time with the dogs, then um, and when that ended, what was the purpose behind? Uh, I guess it was just a um, better opportunity for me. Um, to get that consistent NRL, um, you know, starting spot, mm. um, rather than because you know there's still the likes of um, Chris and Inu was yeah, yeah. and uh, Josh Morris, um, then um, they, they just brought over Hopper, uh, Will Hopper, Hopper Adi. Right. So there's some great players there that I knew I had to contend with, and mm. 
for myself. Yeah, no, I, I understand. And you look at it, like you said, you reflect on it now and go, should I have left or should I have stayed? Um, I think people don't understand as well. You hear a lot of stories about Sydney, but that Sydney lifestyle, man, is pretty intense too. Mm. I don't know. Easy. It's, yeah, it's it can make you as well. 100%. So. That's why we moved to Wollongong from Sydney because Wollongong is a, uh, a bit more um, laid back. Yeah. You know, you got the water there and it's not as hectic. You know, Sydney's just 100 miles per hour. So, And it wasn't far to travel for us to see our families who were in Sydney. It was about an hour, hour job. No, that's true. But you, again, you were from the age of nine there, so it's kind of a lot of the you known as well, right? Mm. So, But then you move it forward. Um, so yeah. COVID hit that, um, when was it, 2020 or, yeah, I think it's 2019 or 2020. Mm, that's right. COVID hit and then, um, and I wasn't doing too well before COVID hit. Um, you know, performance wise and then yeah. um, kind of lost my spot there and then obviously the pressure of it was my last year of my contract so the pressure of providing for your family yeah yeah um, you know it come you know, it starts playing on your mind and it's um, yeah and then the dogs offered me if they if I go there for uh, for peanuts you know um, they'll resign me for another two years there so I was like I'll risk it this year, sacrifice this, yeah, yeah. go there just to um, try and get some game time. But then they got a whole new coach that come over in Trent Barrett and he didn't want any players there. And they said, sorry, we're not going to resign you. So that's what, um, so that yeah. I, I knew I had to sell. So it was coming to the end of that, um, I think it was 2020, um, and being told they let go of like half the staff, half mm. the players. Um, and so I was like, man. It's like there's only well, both dragons. I'm an older bloke, but he had nothing come up too. And I went back to dogs and nothing come up there. And then he, he called me. He goes, Hey, laugh, what are you doing? I was like, Nah, mate, I'm just at home, man. I'm trying to find a job. <laughs> He's like, Oh, why don't you come work with, um, you know, with me? I've been doing some laboring and some traffic controlling. Wow. And I was like, Yeah, I'll take it, man. Because I got, a, I got, you know, four kids I got to provide for. So, mate, you know, they're not going to feed themselves. Sounds, yeah, yeah. So I, I knew you had to work. And, um, yeah, before you know, it, I'm working you know twelve hour shifts, ten hour shifts. You know, it's six in the morning till five in the afternoon, and yeah, yeah. You know, those days where I wouldn't even see my kids um, because you know they'll be in bed because of how late wow. I, I get home. And it was just um, so almost a year of working there, and then I started to think, man, I can't be doing this. I, I'm still young, you know. I, I need to um, um, I need to be playing rugby. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then so my new agent that I got, he was like. Um, he was looking around and nothing come up and then I was just about to officially retire um, in the NRL and then he, he called me, he goes, how would you like to go in super over, overseas and play Super League? Mm. Like you said, there's a lot of things to, you know, you, you, it's not about yourself anymore. You've got a far bigger thing like your wife, kids um, and obviously that offer going to Salford would have been, you know, like, it's my last shot. Yeah. But then it's not just a last shot. It's a full moving, and um, being away from family, like fully away from family, not just mm. you know wife. You mean your parents, nieces, aunties, cousins, yeah. um, but yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, there were some dark moments. I'm not gonna lie there. Um, going through that um little phase in my life, it was just there was times where I'd be staring at the building site and just be like. There's got to be more to this. Yeah. Like this can't be it. And then you know, it's um, some days I was just going in. It's like, man, this this can't be for real. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I can't believe I've just blinked and that you know nine eight years of my career is just gone. And yeah, yeah. Before you know it, I'm just your average Joe. Um, you know, working like every other Australian and mm. um, mm. you know, getting a that little taste. I know when you talk about um, you know, the tough times and everything. Like, obviously, never played to your level, but just doing things that, you know, like, don't make you happy as such. Because, like, if you realise, rugby, before, you know, you said you lost the love for it, was you wouldn't call that work. It was just your hobby, love yeah. doing it. So yeah. everything you've really done has been love connected with rugby. Mm. So then when you come to, like, the reality of this is work, you kind of question, like, you can get yourself in a real bad headspace. I know for sure I've got myself in bad headspace. Like, and just losing losing that, I suppose. And... um. And you got the other pressures, like you said, to the family. But um, how do I say it? Definitely, bro. Um, you're spot on there because um, especially you know, once you have kids, mm. you know, your wife and your kids, 
it's not about you anymore, is it? It's um, you know, you're putting them before anything else. Yeah. You know, everything you do, you have them in the back of your head. Mm. You know, it's never for you. Um, so it's um, when I came over here, and um, you know, obviously the facilities aren't the best here. <laughs> um, you know, there's probably only like two to three clubs that have that you know really good facility. Um, because obviously you know here football rules. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like all oh, the money's in football, and mm. yeah, you, know, you get a few clubs that have, you know, money to spend on their facilities. So, yeah. but because I've worked and I've got a taste of you know that um, everyday life of yeah. you know working minimum you know eight hours and yeah, yeah. Like ten plus hours every day, even on your weekends, I come over here with a different mindset. And, um, the way I I view my job now, mm. like you know, as a athlete. Um, or you, you used to take it for granted. Like you know, I, I definitely took it for granted. Mm. You know the career I had before. Now I see a facility. Yeah, it's not the best, but I see it. Like man, I love. I get to do what I love. You know, I get more time with my kids. I yeah. get to drop them off to school. I get to be there for school pickup. You know, yeah. it's um. You start to see you know, things very differently. And um, I hear a few of the young boys. You know, sometimes the complaining about the. Um. You know, it is one thing um, you you'll know about it. I'm pretty sure Melbourne Storm they do a preseason, but if you're a new player to, to mm. Melbourne Storm, they make them go get like work on site yeah, for a bit. Yeah, do labouring. I that. wonder if they should do that, implement that, like the youngsters coming in to assess. You know, yeah. people come through the academy into the first team. We go, okay, first month of your yeah, preseason, yeah. you're going on site just to be, you know, change your perspective. I think as well, you know, it might like your eggs have been in one basket for so long for so many athletes. I think like just realizing there's more to life than rugby as well mm. can actually bring the joy um to to the footy again because yeah, definitely if you if you have a bad performance you have a bad thing and you go well you know what like i've I'm, i've got some beautiful kids at home yeah, i've got yeah. i've got i can go have a nice coffee i can drop them to mm. school i can spend some quality time with my wife or or anything like that right yeah. um but it's, it's amazing and i think you know even with yourself, I think there's so much more to your purpose outside of footy. It might be what you've done in rugby, even though it's been exceptional. Yeah, I was so I was finishing my youth um, my youth work course nice. back in back in Oz, um, a cert four there. So um, I've always kind of wanted to do that mentor role nice. and kind of um, you know show kids and teach you know, young younger generation mm. coming through my experience from my experience. You know how to guide them. To yeah. you know, the right direction, you know what I mean? Because, like, I'm not the first, and there's going to be a lot more mm. you know, that yeah. definitely um, prepared a, a better end of career. Well, it's just when it ends, it's it's not just like a see you later. I think Elijah Taylor was talking about how in the NRL you have a bit of a transition where they like kind of look after the players after the career and kind of help them set them yeah. up. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> pat on the back. Yeah. And see you later, mate. So it's um, no, nah, definitely NRLs. Um, doing really well mm. with that back at home. Um, even now, they still contact me Amazing. about courses that they have for when I finish up. So it's, um, I definitely think that's something Super League can learn from the NRL is that transition yeah. um, period of you know once you're above twenty eight or thirty mm. and them coming with some workshops and um, offer that because yeah, it's going to be a shock. Like you know, I, I was almost there and I got the shock of my life and. I, mm. I, I only did work for like a year, and and I got the shot. Yeah, now yeah. We, you're now moving over to Salford, though. First season there last year. Um, what a year it's been, not just for Salford, but like in the World Cup as well. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, I kind of <laughs> knew I had it within me, like you know. Yeah. To, um, but I just needed to, like I said, find that love and passion. And you know, last year, yeah, definitely. Um, I, I was pinching myself because. Um, I didn't even think I, I ruled, you know, um, representative yes. rugby, you know, because um, my age and because I just was enjoying my rugby and that's what I wanted to do, just enjoy over here and then spend time with my family and to, um, you know, the boys to, you know. If you, if you bring it back, we'll, we'll go for each stage, but um, if you bring it back to Salford, how different? Like the fans are different, all right. <laughs> yeah. like that's, um, nah, Passionate, mate, aren't they? They, I love it. In NRL are uh, getting thousands and thousands, but over here you think there is like you know the same amount because they they just sing every time. Like and 
they got a song for every play. <laughs> it's it's crazy. I love it. It's yeah. I'm all for that, and yeah. I um, definitely encourage a lot more like of the Super League yeah. fans to get behind their clubs because um, you know without without them, you know the players wouldn't mm. be there. Like, you know. It's um I I honestly think man like that they need to change the the way they've like structured not just not the games or anything like that, but like. The media side of Super League, the media side of Rugby League over here in England, it has to improve. Like, yeah, just like you've got so many creative youngsters. I, I agree with you there. It's, um, I still think they're probably only at like 60% of the crowds that they can get to, to games, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, they um, definitely can like do better on that sort yeah. of marketing and, um, like you know, technology is just evolving these days, yeah. so like. Get the younger generation because yeah, like, like my career, like getting old, you got to push them out. Like. Yeah, I teach the youngsters, man. I just think some of these photographers, they yeah. just got to, you know, they're good. They've had the day, but if you're like, not, not able to make some more career, that did our um Tosa Amor, um, oh, shout out Buffer too. Um, he's at the Bulldog. He's oh, okay. doing all the bull. He's a um the media bloke at Bulldogs, and like, he's his content and yeah, the yeah. way he whatever he does on his laptop, yeah. mate, it's um crazy. If you, Imagine you just yeah. have one of there's two dudes in Australia with no ones in New Zealand now. Josh Hoffman, shout out Josh, Josh Hoffman. He yeah. does the Hurricanes now. Yeah, yeah. And um, the other one's Yopu, Yopu, Yopu. Uh, so he played for New yeah. Zealand Sevens. Content. Oh, Josh Craig. Hoffman, the one yeah. that played. No, no, that's Ryan Hoffman. Wait. Hey, who's the one that played? He played in NRL. That's uh, Ryan for Storm. Ryan Hoffman. Nah. I'm was he a Hoffman? Oh no, no, yeah, that I know you're. you're on was about that a the, Hoffman? Yeah, he's a Hoffman too. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's yeah. Oh, I used to get yeah. him Hoffman too. He, they're both Josh. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> the one you're on about was the Broncos. Yeah, and he played yeah. uh, Broncos. Para? And Para, that's it. Yeah, yeah he was good. He was yeah, good. but this dude Josh Hoffman and Yopu uh, the, content. The well, one of them, Josh does Hurricanes. Yeah, yeah. And his name, um, the, you are not the number. Oh. Adi. Adi. Yeah. He does a lot of work with the Adi, Adi Instagram yeah, photos. Yeah. It's him and normally Yopo oh, doing okay. that. But he's just naturally gifted yeah, and he just knows yeah. it. And I think we need to tap in and screw off qualifications in four years. Yeah, if yeah. you got that gift, just give it him a go yeah. and just let him work with it. But they had like so much vision and creativity that just let them do their thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Man, it, the, the game needs to evolve in that way. And um, if any youngsters are listening, maybe they can... Um, Reach out and do. Then, like you said, how did the opportunity come with Samoa then, if in the World Cup? Because I think the they announced the squad. Because I was talking to the coach, and anyways, he said, uh, "Look, um, before they announced the squad, um, I'm not gonna pick you um, this time. I know you've had a great." And I was like, "Nah, that's fine, mate. I'll, I'll be cheering the boys from the pub." <laughs> 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 so, anyways, he's um, he's announced the squad, and uh, obviously the players in that squad, mate. Mm. Some crazy talent, you know, yeah. um, all young too, and I was just happy. And then um, they played their first game against England, and I was watching it from home, um, you know, with my my beer in my hand and just drinking and watching. And it wasn't the best game from the boys. It was um, they got pumped, you know. It's like singing, yeah, first game, the first game. It was the opener too. So, so much hype on on I, summer. And there was it? and that was the thing that um, I, I felt like. They did that, so it pretty much went the way the media wanted it, like hype them up, and then they get pumped. Yeah. And, and you know, if, and then anyways, um, injuries again with the the boys. And um, luckily enough, I was still in the World Cup was in England, and I was mm. just hanging around um, uh, with my family there. And after I woke up the next morning, so I was you know, raging in my lounge room from the loss, <laughs> screaming out my back. So the dolphins. Uh, um, hammer the hammer they yeah, call yeah. it hammer um and young isaac um tago um he was out yeah so we lost both of them and i was a winger in santa and then anyways me and kenny were like we were driving to the camp and we we're like oh, how good is, how good is this we saw <laughs> <laughs> right we were just uh, sitting on the lounge and um get caught into camp and we both didn't expect it so went into camp and um that followed like pretty much like um when under twenties like went to yeah. camp that week and the coach was like we need you to play. Um I was like, yeah, sweet as so, um I was hoping my boy Kenny you know, got a Can run because he, he definitely would deserve it. And they're gonna rest um Biza but um 
yeah, anyways, he, Kenny was just happy being in yeah, the Before AF. training, yeah, like before what, even with Salford. The morning he gets up and he goes for a walk at five. Um, he said just a mental thing for nice. him. And so you start seeing a few players like uh, the skipper, um, Junior Paula and Josh Papali started joining him. It was awesome. Like, you know, he, he was a great help you know, off the field um, mm. on that side. And anyways, yeah, so we won, we lost that first game and then sec- everyone written us off in that World Cup. Um, yeah, rightly so. After a score like that, and I was just yeah. gone. So I was in there you know, for as long as I need me. And before you know it, we got to the GF. Man, but did you again the whole journey? Were you, um, you know, going into camp, meeting the boys again? Did it just feel you just fit right in straight away? You many boys you knew, or you knew? Yeah, all? Um, I knew a few still, a few of the boys. Um, but it was a very, mm. very young squad. I feel it was only like. Um, yeah, so, mate, but the maturity on those boys, the young boys, yeah, yeah, it's just um, crazy, you know what I mean? It's, um, it just shows the, the gap between NRL and Super League, you know what I mean, with that maturity side of rugby, um, their, their rugby IQ is just um, crazy. Like, I was, t- we just felt like um, tighter and closer as camp, each camp, each, um, you know, we're doing field that, you know, was just helping yeah. and, it was yeah, definitely the best camp that I've been in. And my it was awesome. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, on the field. You <coughs> you know you you grew an extra leg out there, man. It's just like mm. you were just looked like you're just in a bit of a flow state as such. Where we talk, yeah, where you're not really thinking too much about the game, but you're just in a moment where it's like um, they talk about it like an out of body experience where you kind of mm. see ball against England. Yeah. Um, in that in the semi final, and uh, mate, that was probably the best game I've played in. It was that. In, I'm not talking in, oh, what's Wembley Ars, 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 Arsenal Stadium yeah, is that Wembley? Uh, oh, was it Tottenham's? Were you at Tottenham Stadium? Was it Wembley Stadium you were at? Or o- oh, bro, there's a lot in London <laughs> <laughs> Who's, what's, um, oh, I It was their one oh, Okay but Yeah mate <laughs> People listen to this like <laughs> yeah, dumbasses <one, laughs> <laughs> People are thinking right, Learn your football <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, But mate that atmosphere was yeah. Mate, to go there as the underdogs and to go there knowing what happened in the first game, um, it was just mate, it, was, it was the best. And wow. to win it the way we did with yeah. um, critters, be the best one of the best highlights in my career. The the not like the whole time everyone had eyes on on the team, you know, just watching it. Everyone was looking at the socials. Everyone mm. was looking at the hype. He's yeah, our, like, just he's doing our, yeah. um, our cultural hype, <laughs> cultural slash hype slash. Security guy slash yeah. party man. Yeah. <laughs> he was just a hype king. Yeah, he was. You know, he was awesome. He was um, did a lot of the cultural stuff, yeah. especially for the young boys there. Um, yeah. Every night, it's beautiful to see. You know, from the outside in, um, seeing the cultural side of not just Samoan but like Tongas, Fijians, yeah, yeah, Maoris. Um, Even how the like mm. what you said, all the cultural sides that you get to see. Yeah. Of we were so. What hotel were you in? I think we moved the most. We moved like twenty times, like in a space of like four <laughs> weeks, it's because like they stitched us up. They I think you're at Doncaster, hey. Well, that's so the one. was it just a rumor, right? There was like brownies there, or uh, <laughs> and you boys just cleaning them up all the time because right. we. Uh, so I was in the Welsh team, and we went there to play PNG at the end. Yeah, and yeah. Like they were like, hey, we normally have complimentary. Just, yeah, they're one of the best brownies. <laughs> like, every time after dinner or after lunch, like. Oh, Brownie dessert, like, yeah. <laughs> can we get can we get ten brownies, please? <laughs> um, but yeah, we had to move from literally that many times. We spent like half our weeks on buses because we had wow. to move hotels. But um, that's because you know the best so, hotel gets. Mm. Why do you think um, that parish gets such a such a grilling all the time? <laughs> oh wait, um, <laughs> you're done in the World Cups now, but you can talk. <laughs> uh, it was probably. Um, I guess this is like any other coach who doesn't do too well. Eh? Yeah. It's um, just what comes with the job, I guess. You know, he had us. I think the World Cup 2013 when it was here. Yeah. Um, that's when I, I, I debuted, and then he had us in the Four Nations, and then the second World Cup. And I think his win ratio was like in the low 20s, 20 mm. percent. <laughs> so yeah, you know, um, it's only gonna be yeah, bad yeah. if you, you have that kind of status and I uh, feel for him because yeah you know um, he was doing his best you know, what he thought you know, was his yeah, best yeah, yeah. and um, 
older every week, man. He was, he was ready to change. <laughs> um, he <laughs> was ready. <laughs> Uh, ready to flee the countries, but nah. You've read some of the fans, man. Yeah, I've had some and all playing bad. You can imagine him yeah. having some for <laughs> failing the past two World Cups in the Four Nations. But it's um, yeah, it's great for him to go mm. out the way he did, and um, the boys the way they. Did. <laughs> yeah. What was the 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 final like the nerves of that game going against Australia? But I reckon our, our grand final was against England. Like, yeah, you know. After that game, we were battered and bruised. Um, exhausted. It was, yeah, exhausted. Like, we, we lost. Um, Danny Levi had to go back because right, someone yeah. passed away in his family. And then we lost um, from Manuel Brown. Right now, Yatavida, he had, and he got knocked out in that first half against Australia. Yeah. And then we had, we had Middles, who was jumping in, say, our game plan. We knew we had to give it our best against Australia. Like, um, was so if in, in attack... Mm. In attack, one of the halves will have to play hooker because mm. we had no backup. Hook. So, um, look, it wasn't you know, the best preparation, um, injuries wise, yeah, I yeah. guess. Um, but we gave it our best, and that's all that matters. I think we won, we lost that game, but we won like a lot of fans yeah, around the yeah. world. So, and it's oh. something that we left you know, for, for the younger generation, hopefully, inspire, inspire the, the guns, um, you know, in Super League and. Imagine mm. if you had, you know, the added extras, you know, like Tino, um, what's his name, Asofo, yeah, Asofo, yeah. So, you know, the yeah, one who was at Melbourne. Yeah, big you Solomona. Know, Solomona, like these extra yeah. players, you know, why do you, not why is such... Um, like, you no, know, finance side definitely does help, like, you're lying if you're saying no. Mm. <laughs> Stop lying. Because <laughs> <laughs> if I had that chance, I would take it to <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, I guess it also comes down to um, a lot of the Pacific Islander boys are actually born in Australia yeah, yeah. Um, and New Zealand, the ones that play. So like, you kind of can't, you know, um, give it to them for wanting to play for Kiwis country, or Australia. Yeah, because they were actually born in there and raised. Yeah, their blood, their mm. parents made that hate and that is from people outside of the game. Because yeah, yeah. for me, I, I encourage them to, you know, do what they think is right for them. Mm. And, and their families, um, you know what I mean. So, it's yeah. <laughs> got a short career, right? But it's sure. not go, go forever. So, um, yeah, look after yourself. I reckon. Yeah, I, I like <laughs> so. This is my personal um, opinion, right? But for, besides footy, like besides sport, right? I I think Polynesians, Islanders are probably one of the most talented humans we have, right? Mm. You can dance, sing, play footy. Like you're creative, a lot of things, right? And one thing I've learned and noticed whilst being in Australia, like you have all that, right? But the people who drag you down or mock you the most are your own people. Mm. And it frustrates the shit out of me because it's like, it's like that crab pot saying, you know, like when a crab's trying to get out of a bucket, mm. you're trying to pull the crab back down. And if I, I think I, from me being, Obviously, white from the UK coming over there. Like, I'm very much supportive. Yeah, I want you to win just as much as I want to yeah, win. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think that's something I really struggle with. Like, I have a lot of Polynesian friends. Yeah, and I love mocking. I and mean, you got to you got to take the piss, man. Yeah, yeah. Um, he, but it's a fine line between fine like line, let that guy shine for a bit, you know. And yeah, and I yeah. think what what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, no, nah, you're you're not wrong there, bro. It's um, because yeah, we yeah we're usually um, laid back and mm. kind of um, we don't take each other too serious um, but like what you said there is a fine line to you know how you say it and how far you push it eh? it's yeah, um, yeah. yeah it's, it's interesting you say that because you're spot on there because um, there's it's almost as if we have to mock each other to mm. kind of um, feel comfortable kind of belong um, but like you know you don't really know what that Bloke's going through, so yeah. like, yeah, it's, and then he laughs it off because he thinks if he, you know, um, kind of shows a different side, yeah, yeah, he's gonna be portrayed or seen as, I guess, that weak, weak, um, mindset. Hundred percent. So it's, um, yeah, I guess it's something that we definitely need to work on as Pacific Islanders is rather, um, you know, mock, mocking, yeah. um, you know, just take the piss out of it. Yeah, Maybe yeah. just 
Mate, he's just um, <laughs> check if your mate's actually all right. Yeah. <laughs> check if your also actually yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah, um, Because, yeah, it's, um, as, as a Polynesian kid growing up, uh, yeah, I could never, um, I never had that connection with my dad. Really? And I think it's just the um, old school mentality mm. where um, I, I guess maybe you might be the same, but like I can never turn to my dad if I felt like, you know, I needed to talk. I never knew anything mm. about that. I only just started learning about opening up and being vulnerable, yeah. um, you know, from my wife because she's Australian and yeah, nice. So like, um, I, I still have hard times to show my actual emotions and feelings because the way I brought up has always been just take the piss out of it yeah. and you'll be all right. So like, yeah. yeah, I think um, you know, <clears throat> if I reflected on mine, my f- my mum and dad are great. I think I think we um, <laughs> I, I look at some of uh, Johnny. Johnny Two of Asa yeah, uh, videos, yeah, yeah. and he's like, "Oh, I see my white friends <laughs> yeah. call their dad by their first name and stuff." <laughs> <laughs> right, but yeah. like, what I've learned from it, like, we are different in aspects, but um, I think, I think you know, let's just lo- looking and watching like the, the 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 kindness, the the you know, you'll give your last meal to someone like mm. or half your half your noodles to yeah, someone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But like, you know, you just give you'll give, 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 which yeah. is amazing. Your last penny, you know, shout the boys and mm. the ever be your own expense. Yeah, yeah. But I my, my like my relationship with my dad's a bit different. Like when I was younger I was very much we were very close. Oh, he'd take me to the games. He wouldn't say much about my game, but he just watched me the yeah. field, you know? Yeah. But as he's cut older, I think I've felt like I need to evolve and have a different approach to life because I feel like maybe it's time for me now to yeah. teach yeah. him the ways that life has changed from back then. That 100%. tough love is not really required yeah. as much. And we can, it's, if we want to go down the mental health talk, like there's a lot of people out there who, who do suffer in silence. And I know mm. a lot of lot of males, islanders suffer, but, uh, but like because they've never, we or they have never been shown you can talk to each other. Yeah, yeah. Like, more inclined to maybe go to your mum or, yeah. like you said, your partner. Yeah. Um, but, and then, because cause we, cause, cause you like the joke, like to laugh, it's our way of expressing it. Mm. Like, man, like, it's, yeah. It's like, I, I, it's, I, I should probably word that a bit better, but it's just, I think there's a, it's almost kind of like we're using, like, you know, mocking each other or taking a piss as a carpet to sweep mm. actual feelings under, isn't it? Like, yeah. Um, but yeah, you're spot on because now having a son myself, yeah, and you know, um, three daughters, it's using my experience, uh, yeah. my upbringing, of not having that guidance, mm. um, you know, through my dad, and then using that to, yeah, yeah. change change the path because you know, like used to say, we have to keep on that same mm. path. Like we, that's a great thing about being a parent now is I get to use that to change the direction that I want to. You know, teach my son that he can cry. Like, yeah, you know, it's nothing wrong with crying. It's nothing wrong if you're soft. You know, it's, for um, sure. If you need a cuddle, you know, yeah, come yeah. have a cuddle. And I think that's what um, a lot of a lot of um, kids are missing out on. I guess, and mm. I guess that yeah, definitely does help. Yeah, for sure, man. And I, it's power to you sharing that because then it just normalizes it again. I'm trying to think though, like where. Trying to trying to tap into that area of just vulnerability and, and showing that because I think you know I think there's always truth behind every joke though. Yeah, yeah. There's some kind of truth behind it. Yeah. Someone's saying, you're right, uh, right? Um, if you're having a crack and someone's mocking you, yeah, yeah. Is the reality is they're having a crack because it's maybe insecurity in themselves. Yeah, yeah. They're like, oh, this has, a, you know. Yeah, like whenever someone's doing well out there, there's normally someone telling him that he's not doing well just yeah. because it's on there. You know that reflection yeah. of themselves. Yeah, yeah, it's very true. Yeah. Ha- imagine like when you were going for those times back then when you, you know, when you were on the site working on building site or on the traffic control. Like, mm. was there much guidance guidance back then? Um, on from just like a mentor or someone like you could go, hey man, I'm I'm battling you. Um, my brother, he's he's um he's probably been my mentor through. My career, nice. my life. Um, my older brother, he's yeah, Caleb. So he's um, he's always checking in on me and that because um, I had because I don't know if you know, but I had a mental breakdown during that COVID. No, no. Where I went into the um, the psych, um, the mental ward, the nice. hospital there. Nice so to share that. Thank they, you. They bro. had to admit me, but um, 
yeah, we can share that story another time because it'll be a long story. <laughs> so, but anyways, yeah, my brother's because he's been through the same thing, mm. um, and I guess, uh, yeah, I guess everyone has like you know those dark periods of time, yeah. um, has those dark moments, and yeah, he, yeah, he he would guide me, but uh, still, yeah, felt like I was um, still yeah. kind of in a dark place. Do you find as well, like, trying to find an escape from these times is, like, people, because we don't know how to talk, you turn to alcohol, you may turn to drugs, or you might turn to something else you shouldn't really, mm. you know, just an escape to feel, yeah, feel for a bit. Just the band-aid. Band-aid things, mm. but, no, man, I, 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 you know, when we talk about dark, dark times, even myself, I didn't play to your level, Tim, so it's like, mm. there's levels and all that, but we all have our own feelings, we yeah, all have our own yeah. emotions, and when I did my knees the three times, like yeah, the third yeah. time in Australia, I think the hardest thing from it all was just there was no family there. Yeah, no yeah. support. You're isolated, eh? Because when you when you reflect on on life or uh, like there's a study on it, like the most cu- the countries who don't suffer with mental health the most most are remote countries or villages because yeah. the villages the cu- the community get together yeah, and they yeah. support each other. But then when you come to these westernized countries, we're very much single minded. Yeah, we become more lonely. For themselves. And I just think, for me, when I was over there, man, just like the, I remember, so it was the last session, last surgery was on when I was 25, I had an ACL done, and then they had to cut into the bone of my leg, and then I was, because they realised the bone was not straight, and like into yeah, the knee, yeah. and I was in there for five days, and after day one, day two, I had the surgery, and, and then I was, they said, you've got to be here for five days, because we've cut into your bone, yeah. and no one was there after two days, and yeah, I had three days tough, of home. man. And the thoughts I was getting were like just, just like just ended. Dark. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it was legit. Like just, just you need to stop feeling this way. You need yeah. to end it. And I think I was like trying to escape at that time, um, with drinking, with partying and stuff. And it wasn't me ever. I was yeah. never that person. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think from that, then I realized it's like, well, I need to make some changes. You, yeah, need to break some barriers. Yeah, that I think yeah, something needs to change. Otherwise, yeah, yeah you're gonna end up. Down there. In a dark, dark yeah, place, you know? Yeah. Is that yeah. something around your area, man, that we hit there for you? Or? Yeah, 100%. Mate, especially with injuries. Um, man, they, they definitely play a huge role on the way your thought process goes yeah. into that sp- downward spiral. Um, and mate, it doesn't even have to be injuries. It could be like the way you're playing. Yeah, you know, performance. And, and then you got people spraying you from the outside. Um, yeah. You know, and then, yeah, so it all just spirals into these thoughts, so these yeah, dark yeah. thoughts, and like, before you know it, you're trapped in there, aren't you? And you're in this dark hole and mm. trying to climb out, but another thought comes on top to just yeah, make yeah. it even harder to climb out. So it's, um, I definitely hear you there, man. I find as well when you're in those places, you this might be the problem, and then you start to create more problems. Like this, yeah, yeah, family now, this. There's yeah. income, there's a roof over my head, there's food, there's ki- like kids for you, for instance. But yeah. we just start to create bigger, bigger problems. Yeah, yeah. So one thing I always used to tell people and tell myself I learned was just write down like to how to, s- to stop anxiety is what mm. write down what you can control and what you can't control, like what yeah, you can yeah. physically control right now. Yeah. And that really relieved so much anxiety like for me. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Just writing man. it down. Yeah. Um, journaling, meditating is really big for that now. And yeah, yeah. I think like, I'm blessed now because I feel like I'm grateful I went through that, Tim. Yeah. Just because, like, um, I feel like my purpose now is to maybe shed light on that and mm. s- support and help others. Yeah. And like you said, so many footy players, sports athletes go through this of a couple of bad performances. They all probably think I'm shit. Like, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, you have one yeah, bad you game, start. you're in the shed, you see the boys talking over there, you're like, he thinks I'm shit. Yeah, you start making up these <laughs> thoughts, these thoughts in your head that don't actually, not even occur. true. Yeah, we're just we're, our minds are, can be beautiful, they can be amazing, or they can be dark and yeah. scary, man. Yeah, so. The minds are very, um, the mind is a very tricky. Um, yeah, part of the body isn't it? It can it can make you think a lot of things and things that are not even there. Yeah, man. <coughs> we we're, we're regarding yourself now, though. Like I'm, I know. Went a little bit heavy there, but like for grounding yourself now, man, I just think like your journey of what you've done just inspires so many people out there. Like I feel like more people are talking about you now mm. than ever, like positively wise. Like just yeah. 
what you've done in especially that I think that World Cup man that was just something for everyone to go wow like don't give up on this guy you know yeah definitely it just shows if you um if you have the right mindset and you know you just um I guess just win each day don't even look to the next day but just win each small battle each day mm. um you're never too old because you know I thought I was too old to play in that World Cup and look what happened yeah yeah you know, I guess get what you put out into the world don't mm. you like you know if you're working hard and you're grinding and you know the world works 100 in mysterious ways where it'll just throw you good karma but if you're cheating yourself and you're taking mm. shortcuts you know you're only going to get what you put in yeah yeah <coughs> did you have have like goals or anything like essentially when you maybe were younger write things down goals or what i want to achieve or what i want to do you know uh, with salford i was like oh no nah making my goal because I knew that's when the World Cup is and I was like I want to play for Samoa one more time wow. and um, anyways I didn't think about it throughout the season I just took each game you know I didn't think about playing for the World Cup I thought about playing for Salford putting my best foot there and before you know it, each game led to um, you know, good performance from the yeah. team and then you, know, you get the team performing well the players that play and they get selected for their mm. their um, their country so it's, um, yeah, it's crazy because now I even now, I'm starting to journal because my wife, she's always into it. So I'm, I'm doing my daily goals. Hey, like, yeah. like journal, hey, you, brother. It's awesome, bro. Yeah, but it's a game it's changer. Working like I'm doing my daily goals that I want to do each day. Um, yeah, you know, three, four goals that I, I want to win. Yeah, yeah. Um, each day, so it's um staying on top of those little little wins. Yeah, yeah. Will get you the big wins. That's the one. Even um, I find just creating like actually physically seeing what you've done that day because sometimes we'll chuck like loads of things on our day what we gotta do might have like 10 things to do on that thing mm. nine times out of 10 most people are doing three or four day goals yeah you know? yeah we get 10 on there you only do four and you're already you're instantly like fuck yeah I get that. so you're in a negative mindset yeah so it's all about shifting it and being realistic on what you want but um man it's amazing to hear what you're doing your journey everything that you you can continue to do anyway but um and I think just a lot of people out there are going to listen to this and be like, yeah, man, I appreciate this guy even more, like knowing you more than just a footy player. Mm. So, yeah, it's, uh, no, it's, it's amazing, man. I am happy to, um, you know, always have these chats, bro. So if you need me here, you know, talking just about life, bro. And, yeah, um, yeah. You know, any way I can help any younger generations come through or just anyone who's struggling with life in general. And mm. look, um, I don't have it all figured out, you know. I still have my days where I'm battling. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, myself, so um, we can do this together. Hundred <laughs> percent, brother. I appreciate that, and I, I hope, like I said, people are listening to this. Uh, one thing I always ask my guests before we wrap up is just, what are you grateful for? I'm grateful for my wife and my kids. You know, I live every day because of them. Mm. Um, you know, it's, mate. Um, we take it for granted, you know, being able to go home and see them. You never know what's going to happen. So going yeah. home and seeing them, you know, it just makes my my night better and my day. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate that, mother brother. Thank you so much, and um, yeah, enjoy. Awesome, bro. Cheers. Don't just talk it, walk it.